welcome, welcome once again to Let's Talk Marriage. This is Pastor Larry coming to you this Wednesday afternoon with Let's Talk Marriage. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, we're going to get right on into our program. I hope everyone is doing well. If you woke up this morning, you are doing well. We're going to get right on into our program. Our program today is going to be talking something that's uh, uh, been on my heart for a while, and that is praying for our children. Praying for our children. Uh, Truly, in this uh, day and time, we need to make sure that we are praying for our children because they're, uh, we've mentioned it last time on the program, uh, that they're going through so much at this time. Uh, there's so many things that are coming against them. Uh, those are in high school. Those are in gra- even in grade school. And uh, things are uh, not the same as they were um, when uh, we were coming up. Uh, things were a little different, even though we had a, uh, we were uh, raised, I was raised in a single parent home. Uh, we had uh, hard times. There were things, there were gangs and things at school, but there was a level of respect that uh, young people showed to their elders. Even, you know, in a gang, they were still, uh, in a sense, respected their elders. They respect the church. But now uh, it just seems like everybody is just, just running wild. They parents are younger and younger but that's really no excuse just because you're a you're a young parent uh just because you're a young parent does not mean that you can't be held uh accountable uh for your children's actions and that's basically the way you react to things the way that you are doing things uh we have to make sure that we have integrity when we do things and a lot of times we uh, have the parents that are just as worse as the kids. That you know the teachers can't do anything with them, or when the teachers uh, send uh, things home for them or request a meeting with the parents, uh, some of the parents get attitude with their teachers, and you know they don't you know know what to do. And a lot of teachers are that's why there's so many openings in the teaching industry because the teachers don't want to deal with it anymore because. Uh, these some of these things should be taught at home and uh, when you teach your kids things at home teach them values how to become uh, citizens uh, good citizens of the uh, of the earth you know because you know we're you know in in this world so we have to make the best of it so we can't very well have our children you know you hear things where uh, kids are gathering together going in the malls uh, causing a whole bunch of uh, problems and uh, their uh, carjacking. Most of the carjackings are done by uh, teenagers or even uh, kids that are not even teenagers yet, uh, 12, 13-year-olds that are young teenagers, you know, and things like that. And one of the things uh, uh, that caused this and brought about a lot of this, and I mentioned, we mentioned it on the program uh, several times that, There need to be a uh, drive to go back to church. Uh, I know a lot of people, you know, might have been hurt by a church. If you've been hurt by a church, don't stop going to church. If you don't want to go to that church, go to another church. Uh, Because uh, if you go to a McDonald's and you get bad food, bad attitude, you might not go back to that say mcdonald's but you will go back to another mcdonald's you'll just go to a different one and that's what you should uh, do in church Uh, if you've been hurt at a church and you don't see no resolution to the issues that you were having in that church and then again you have to remember that there's no such thing as a perfect church Uh, but you uh if you realize that the issues that you're having in that church cannot be resolved uh, you you know just find another church you know and make sure we keep our children in church if they're of age if they're under 18 they should be uh, going to church with you and if they are over 18 they should have been going to church with you before they turned 18 and then uh, once they turn age 18 uh, it's you know it's their decision then if they don't want to go then Uh, But if you put it in them, they might not go right away, but it will return to them and they'll go later on in life. 
All right, because there's a great need uh, and a great uh, revival to uh, go back to church. And, you know, and we, uh, with social media going on, a lot of people stay at home. I, I understand the, the ones that are shut in, the ones that cannot get out. But the ones that can get out, uh, make sure you go to church. Take your children to church. And uh, churches make it interesting <laughs> where the kids want to go to church. If you're doing the same thing in your church, it's not working. Try something different. There's so many things out there. There's so many programs that you can get involved to get your uh, children active in the church. That's just like when they go to school. If you uh, send the kids to school just to, uh, how they used to say, reading, writing, arithmetic, rith how they used to say, uh, if that's the only thing they're doing in school, they're not going to go to school. They're not going to be interested in school. They might go to school, but they're not going to be learning anything. That's why when you go to school, there are several other things that are mixed in there. There's other programs. There's uh, associations you can get into. You can uh, get on teams. Uh, uh, you can get in clubs at the uh, school. That's to keep the kids interested and keep their minds occupied. Our children's minds are not occupied. Uh, what's occupying our children's mind now is social media now that's what they're doing now they're turning to social media when they want to vent they turn to social media when they when they want to get back at someone <laughs> they go to social media and post everything out there and even when they want to vent it's posted on social media and a lot of times they're meeting the wrong people on social media and uh, social media can be a good thing but it also can be a bad thing so we have to make sure that we are involved with our children. Uh, even when they get grown, check in on them once in a while. And children, please check in on your parents once in a while. I know you're grown and out and you finally got out on your own. Uh, but please, you know, call mom and dad every once in a while and check on them. It's not their job to call you. You call them. You know, they raised you already. Uh, so we have to realize that. And stop holding grudges against your parents, children, because there's no such thing like a church. There's no such thing as a perfect parent. Uh, the parents did. Uh, we did the best that we could for what with what we had. And uh, we raised you to the best of our ability. So we have to make sure that we are uh, loving on our children and teaching them. Uh, it's not always uh, telling them. You know, it's teaching them because you can tell someone all something all day long. Uh, but if it's not sinking in, it's not it's not going anywhere. We have to teach them. And, and I always in a lot of my messages, I always mention how uh, Jesus had 12 disciples and one of them was a, a devil. But he constantly taught them everything he did was a teaching lesson. Uh, that's why a lot of times he uh told parables because they didn't understand you know him coming from the intellectual he's a heavenly being a son of god they're not going to understand heavenly language or heavenly uh <laughs> vocabulary so he broke it down for them to understand it so he told them in everyday stories and that's how we have to do with our children we have to tell our children uh, if they are going through something, let them know if you went through the same thing. You know, don't let your children think that you grew up being a perfect kid and you're a perfect parent. And, you know, let them know that uh, you make mistakes and we all make mistakes. It's a matter of what you do after you make that mistake. Don't make it again. You use that mistake as a learning tool, as a teaching tool. And that's why we uh, go through so many different things with our children. And our children are just, they're, uh, they're, they're, asking for help they're begging for help they they need our attention you know some you know you sometimes you can have in a family you can have five kids and uh four might be you don't really have to check on them they do what they're supposed to but it's always going to be that one uh that you're going to have to focus all your attention on and it's not that 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 particular child is loved more than the other one they, they just need more attention so we have to focus our attention on the children that needs attention and uh, make sure that we are following up on them at school and make sure we know who their friends are, you know, as parents and and show be a good example uh, as a husband and wife. Uh, let them see what a married couple is about, not you always fighting, always arguing. Let them see what a uh, 
couple that's you know been married for a long time see how they interact with each other let them see that and uh, uh, always uh, uh, use every opportunity to teach them and not just tell them what to do uh, because they got everybody telling them what to do so <laughs> make sure that we are teaching them and our children uh, can go far because we want our children to be blessed and they can't be blessed if we don't support them. Uh, try to support the things that they're doing, the little little programs that they're in in school. If they're in uh, school plays, make sure you try to get to those. And if you're not, if you have to work, let them know. Let them understand that you have to work, and you'll be at the next one. And when you come there, be the loudest parent there. And let them know that you are there to support them, uh, because our kids really need us as uh, parents and as uh, this is uh, let's talk marriage and this is all part of being married let them know what married life is about so they won't uh, look forward to so they'll look for, so they'll have something to look forward to let them know what uh, teach them what true love is and you know so they won't just look to and also show them what love is you know hug your kids uh, tell them you love them you know uh, don't let someone down the street or some thug in the neighborhood, you know, tell them how good they look. Tell your uh, fathers, tell your daughters how uh, nice they look. Uh, let them know that they're beautiful, you know, and, and encourage your sons. Tell them how intelligent they are, how athletic they are, if they're into athletics. And let them know that uh, they're, uh, they are loved because if you don't uh, show them love, somebody on the street will show them a false sense of love. And uh, we have to make sure that we are supporting our children. And my heart goes out to all the children. Uh, some are, are uh, uh, going through so many different things. So we have to make sure that we are uh, supporting our children and loving on them because uh, they are our future. And uh, when we were coming up, we, you know, it, it, things were just so simple then. You know, you went to school. <laughs> We didn't have video games. <laughs> we didn't have any of those distractions. But there's so many different distractions uh, that are going on. And mothers, watch how your daughters are <laughs> dressed before they leave the house. You know, I, I know when they get a certain age, they want to wear what the latest thing uh, that's out there. But they can't always can't always do what everybody else do. Be different. Uh, teach your children to be different, not to be uh, followers followers uh teach them to be leaders and that's what we need we need strong leadership uh, among our young people teach them to be uh leaders and good citizens of the world uh as a uh, christian uh, because they are uh, going out into the world uh, once they get past 18 going into college uh they're going to be going out into the world going into jobs and uh having families of their own they have to know how to interact uh, with others and, and uh, teach them cultural things, you know, don't just keep them in the hood. <laughs> and that's the only thing they know is the hood. And they go outside the hood. They don't know what to do. They don't understand people with accents. Uh, you know, because we were coming up uh, when I was going to school, even though I, I grew up in the projects, I still had the opportunity to be around other nationalities as growing up. Matter of fact, one of my best friends as a kid was a Caucasian uh, kid. Uh, and we were uh, very close uh, coming up and uh, because we uh, our church was a mixed congregation. So I interacted with different nationalities. So we were on that was understandable. And uh, there was no uh, surprises, no not. And so when I by the time I got to college, I understood uh, people with accents, I understood different uh, nationalities. And so you have to teach our kids so they won't feel like uh just because they're the only one in a place that they are outcasts. Just because you're the only place, that, the only one in a room, that means that you're the special one that's in that room. You're the room. You're the one everybody's going to focus on. You're the one that's going to set the standards for uh, what's going on in your companies or in your schools. So make sure they know how to interact. And uh, and again, once again, I can't stress it enough. Make sure we keep our children in church and it doesn't necessarily uh, a lot of people think it has to be a big church it doesn't necessarily have to be a big church just a church where everyone feel welcome uh, warm and blessed and uh, when you're in that type of envi environment 
uh, kids can do well. They'll do well. Uh, because I remember when I was a uh, growing up, I had just as much fun at church that, as I did in school. Uh, matter of fact, I had more fun at church because at church, uh, I went to church with uh, a lot of my cousins, and we had friends, and we all grew up together. And it, even to this day, we still have those friendships that are still there. And we can call and, and reminisce about things that are from the past because we grew up together in the same church. Uh, so make sure your uh, children have that foundation uh, because when you put that found instill that foundation within them, uh, when they get older, they'll know right from wrong. Uh, that's another thing that uh, kids are, don't know right from wrong because mom and dad is not teaching them. Uh, don't tell them what's right and what's wrong. Teach them what's right and what's wrong. Uh, because when you, I always say, when you teach someone, they're more apt to listen to you than you telling them. Uh, because people are going to be telling them things all their life. So when you teach them, and that's what Jesus did with his disciples. He didn't tell them. He taught them. And uh, he was set down and just teach them. And when he did perform miracles, he let them see him. And, and he told them they can do the same thing. And when they failed, he told them, explain why they failed. And told them, that, you know, uh, uh, pretty much the next time you can do it. Uh, so this is what we have to do with our families. This is Pastor Larry. I'm going to be signing off. Until we meet again, let's stay tuned or stay in tune with our children and love on our children. This is Pastor Larry. I'm going to be signing off. And I want to take this opportunity to invite you out to our services at New Zion Christian Center, where I'm the senior pastor. And we're located at 15014 South of Plain Street in Plainfield, Illinois. And until we meet again, this is Pastor Larry. I'm going to be signing off with Let's Talk Nash. Love your children.